Hey there, event marketers, Jessica Heasley here. Welcome to another episode of EM All Access, where we get you up close and personal with some of the biggest brands, the most interesting events, and the most innovative marketers. Today's episode is sponsored by GES, a global full service provider of live events. And it focuses on the attendee journey. Creating the best experience requires relevant, meaningful paths and journeys attendees take as they progress through an event. I spoke with GES Vice Presidents John Wu and Jeff Youngs about creating events that are shared and shareable, allowing attendees to choose their own experiences and new technology tools for engaging target audiences. Let's listen in. So how are today's B2B event attendees different than those from a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago? with mobile devices and technology enabling us to reach out faster, right? Get, be more in touch with the information that's all the way around us. Um, they're becoming just better informed. And, you know, with the technology and everybody has that screen that they can carry around all the time, um, how to grab their attention and engage them has changed dramatically in, in the last five years and uh, at least a little bit in the last year just because different platforms come out and, and different ways of interacting with each other. Uh, keep emerging and so uh, we need to be very clever and creative in ways of grabbing their attention uh, at an event than we than we used to. It used to be much simpler and now it may be a little bit more fun, <laughs> more creative, but uh, yeah, we enjoy that. How is that changing uh, how they interact with the event experience, the event content, and then with each other at B2B events? Well, one thing I'd say is that it moves much quicker. Uh, you touched on that a, a, yeah. a moment ago. Is that they're very quickly talking to each other, moving from thing to thing, and uh, and consuming information and and experiences as, as quickly as they can. They want to get how much can I get in today? Is kind of the mindset sometimes if if the event's well crafted. I think it's just deepening the experiences too, right? It's becoming much more. I hate to use that word experiential, right? They're it's no longer about just going to the classroom. The classroom, the old school way of educating people is, um, may not be relevant anymore, right? Um, people learn through engagement. You know, people, if you tell me something, I may forget, but then if you show me, right, then I can do it and I can learn from what I'm doing. So the active participation becomes much more important. And I think you'll see experiences that are leveraging content to the hilt, but it's going to be smaller groups engaged in an activity that's going to make them remember through either muscle memory or a new way of learning. Those traditional methods still have a place, but they're, it's a little bit of a different place and it needs to be blended with uh, some new, more innovative approaches. Depending on the audience and the, and the message and the need at the time, you know, we, don't, we don't want to just throw out the old, bring in the new. We want to blend them in an appropriate way. Yeah, it's that mix, right? It's being able to program the event so that you have a, the right blend and symmetry between those hands-on engagement experiences, the, the large format sessions, the breakouts. It's mm -hmm. being able to create that continuous learning through different methods that makes it really effective at shows. I think a lot of people in the industry look to millennials as a driver for this behavior change. Would you say that is the biggest change in behavior driving, driving what's happening in B2B well, events, or is it just yeah. one of them? I would ask who's looking. <laughs> is it millennials that are looking that they're driving the event, or is it you know, people that are you know, say my age looking at it, or you know, baby boomers that have been doing it, now they're looking at this generation to see how they're changing the event? Right? It's from the perspective of the user, right? It's like, if it's a millennial, then you know, they may think the event is already done. You know? it's, um, I think people are just understanding that there is five generations that are coming into our event space now. And you have to be able to curate the message in order to be effective amongst all generations. It's not just one message that can overlay across all of them or one delivery mechanism that will fit all of them. It doesn't work anymore. It has to be customized. Right? It has to be personalized. Attendee journey can happen en masse, but ultimately you're trying to get the one-on-one -on -one engagement to turn them into evangelists, into you know, um, advocates of what you're trying to say and promote so that you can ultimately have them share that information with somebody else. And then you look at amplification that way. Um, it's just a different strategy. How are you studying behavior of attendees and then implementing that into your event strategies? 
Um, we actually do a lot of behavioral studies. We actually work with um, uh, people that are, say, in anthropology and understand behavior. And we talk about Maslow's hierarchy, about how we um, take the need for food, water, shelter out of this equation so they're not distracted at the conference. How we use methodologies of play in order to elevate across Maslow's hierarchy to get to a higher state of learning and understanding so that you're having a richer engagement, right? Um, just because you're engaging doesn't mean that it's a good one, right? <laughs> it could be a poor experience. But ultimately, you need to try and help people move their thinking and change their mindset about what they're learning and then how they can adopt that information quickly. So we apply a lot of different philosophies. But ultimately, what we love to do is everybody's got a trend deck. Everybody talks about trends that are occurring. Um, and we actually took a couple of them that are very prominent right now, gamification, data visualization. Um, we take uh, vignettes, scenes that provoke an, an immediate response to tell stories. Those are all vehicles, but why are they effective, right? We look at the behavioral modes of why they're effective because it immerses the audience, immerses the viewer into that scene, or it makes people connect to relevant content or to each other, or it gives an opportunity for that person to share that information. That's why those trends are very effective in communicating as a communication tool for, um, for stories and message and content. Um, so we try to understand the behavior and then we design to the behavior, right? Rather than, and figure out how that's going, how the message and the content is going to craft the environment to make it most effective for that person to learn and then be able to share that out to somebody else. So it's really like more behavior driven rather than saying, hey, design me a structure and a kiosk and a counter and put my brand up on the wall like this. <laughs> With five generations of people now coming to corporate events and the new influx of Generation Z into consumer events, the attendee journey has never been more cluttered, complex, or critical. And remember, different types of attendees require different paths and journeys. I'd like to thank John and Jeff for joining me and you for watching. Learn more about this episode's sponsor, GES at GES.com and explore our growing library of EM All Access conversations and behind the scenes tours at eventmarketer.com.